Hi, everybody. I hope you're doing marvelously well. In this episode, we're going to be hanging out with our good friend, Mr. Christian Kohler. Yes, Christian, Mr. Metal Kohler of the Kohler Audio Cult. Christian went to a soon-to-be-demolished pool, yes, a swimming pool, that's P-O-O-L, and created a whole bunch of IRs for a stunning reverb plugin called the Rotten Pool. He also recorded metal drums in it and created some incredible drum samples, which, of course, you can download for free down below. You can download those drum samples. And this video is a little tuition video on how he created those amazing sounds. So let's let Christian take it away. Thanks, Christian. Welcome to Schwimmbad Funkstadt. Here we are, and this is such a cool place. And now, the giant pool. I haven't promised too much, right? Fucking amazing, look at this. Well, this is 50 meters or something. But before I show you the process of how I recorded and edited and processed these samples, let me show you the final samples. Let me show you the results. I'm pretty sure you want to hear that. I want to make you a little hungry. So what we got here is a drum recording that I recently did. It's all acoustic drums. Just a kick drum is MIDI only. Sounds like this. And the kick drum that we are using right now is one of the Andy Sneap kick drums, Easy Drummer, the old version. And now I'm gonna replace the Sneap kick drum with our Rotten Pool kick drums. There are three different kick drum sounds that I created from that session. They come as TCI files, so you can load them straight into Trigger. Let me show you this. And yes, they come with the course. If you get the course, you get the samples and the plugin, everything. Anyway, start with the Sneap kick in solo. And there's the pool kick. Back. Pool. All those samples, by the way, have a dangerous low end. Keep that in mind. Anyway, um, let's have a listen in the mix. We got three faders here. This is closed mics, overhead, and the fun part, the room mics. That's the pool. That room just sounds insane. Okay, let's switch to the next preset. This was the so-called big ball scoop kick drum sound. So let's switch from this preset to another one that is called wide open, which is more of a rock kick drum. But let's just jump right into the course and have some fun at the pool. Enjoy. This is the kick drum we're using. My beloved Yamaha recording custom 22 inch kick drum, a classic for recording. And we are using a real metal setup here. I'm using two Evans heads. Um, this one isn't that important, but this one is important. And this is the Evans EMAD Heavyweight, so the most metal sounding kick drum batter head you can imagine. And I brought the different rings with me, so you can we can experiment a little with how much dampening we want. But this is a two-ply head, very damp and very short, very fat and dark sounding for a cool metal kick drum sound. Right now it is tuned as deep as possible, that's where I start. 
So I just hand tighten everything and make sure there's no, no weird flubber or no weird ringing or something. That's how I try to record it. And later I want to do one or two experiments. I want to try it with and without the external dampening, which will give us a more controlled and a more open sounding kick drum. And I might also try to tune it a little higher. Let's talk about the microphones. I'm gonna use another heavy metal classic. This is the Audix D6. This will be our main kick drum mic inside of the kick drum. Um, another microphone inside of the kick drum will be this one. This is the Shure Beta 91 pressure zone microphone. Another classic, uh, gives you a lot of click and usually sounds great blended with a dynamic. For the weight, the body, and the low end, I've added a ribbon mic, a no-hype ribbon mic, outside of the kick, and I've pulled it away quite a bit. Hopefully, that's going to capture a lot of low end. And this no-hype ribbon microphone is one of the most ballsy-sounding uh, ribbons that I know. That's why I've taken this one. So we got three close mics to play with. For the overheads, we have the exact same setup like before. So these are the Rupert Neve SE Electronics pencil condensers, and they turned out to sound great for this session. Usually, if I record a full entire drum kit, I go for darker sounding overhead mics, but these ones are quite bright and quite airy sounding, but that turned out to be really cool on the snare. You know, we don't have any cymbals that might sound harsh, but for the snare, it added a really nice snap and clicky attack that I liked. So I'm hoping that they will also sound great on the kick drum. And finally, we got our spaced pair of Austrian audio OC818 uh, mics that you can see over there. Uh, spaced AB setup, uh, maybe something like, what is this? Seven meters away from the kick drum. Same position like last time with the snare. They're in Omni. And um, yeah, so they, they're going to give us the, the actual sound of the room. Let's get started. Uh, let's record some samples. That was the first test. Everything sounds pretty cool. The Audix mic sounds amazing. This ribbon mic does exactly what I want it to do. Really, really beefy, nice low end. The swimming pool mics, the Austrians are great anyway. Pressure zone mic is fine. The only thing I'm not a fan of right now is the overhead setup. And the reason is it sounds a little thin. You've just heard it. But that's a typical overhead problem, overhead kick drum problem. We have already moved them a little further away, but usually when you record drums, you have the overheads here looking down at the kick drum. The problem is the low end mostly goes into this direction and not up, which means if you put the mics up here, it sounds rather thin. And today we don't have to capture any cymbals, anything else. So we can put our overheads anywhere. So I'm going to turn them into something I would call underheads. I will try to just lower them and maybe go something like here. So it's still a little bit above the, the kick drum, but like facing the resonant head um, where we hopefully get a little more low end. Ah, that's a lot more low end now. Let's just call it underheads, right? Our underheads. I will now remove the dampening ring like this. And finally, I'm also going to remove the pillow inside the kick drum. I'm not going to remove it. I want this pillow to be inside the kick drum just to 
dampen the resonance of the shell itself, but I will move it away from the resonant head where it is right now. I gotta interrupt our little adventure for a moment because I wanna show you those different kick drum tuning and muffling settings here in Cubase. These are the recorded files and I'm just playing two of the microphones right now. So I'm playing the D6 and I'm playing the no hype kick mic. I'm not using the overheads and the room mics for this test because I want you to hear the differences as good as possible. And uh, it's easier to hear the differences through the close mics. We start with the lower tuning. And as you remember, this is the lowest tuning we can get. Like all the screws are just hand tightened. And this is a good starting point for any typical metal kick drum tone. Because as you might remember, we want to stay below a tuning region where we get a real ringing note out of the kick drum the boom boom that's what you want for a cool whatever let zeppelin rock kind of kick sound but we want to stay below that first of all because if you stay very low you get a lot of click and you get a very short and controlled kick drum sound which is great especially for extreme metal where the kick drums are very fast and if you have a longer ring in the kick drum that's gonna cause trouble we're talking about a typical clicky modern kick drum sound here, but that is what you usually want. So let's have a listen. This is the lowest possible tuning and we are using the full muffling. It sounds like this. So that is very short, very controlled, a clear attack, not a lot of low end, very tight. But if we EQ this a little bit, I'm pretty sure we can get a great kick drum sound out of this. Now let's see what happens if we remove the dampening ring from the batter head. So this is with the ring and the red version is without the ring. Let's have a listen. And that is interesting, don't you think? Let's have another listen. We get a lot more low end. by removing the ring. The kick drum even sounds a little deeper. And why is that? We are already using a very, very low tuning. So there's not a lot of resonance in that kick drum tone anyway. And if we are also muffling it, we are not allowing the kick drum to resonate. So by removing the muffling ring, we get more low end because the kick drum can just vibrate and resonate a little more freely. Before. After. And that actually sounds better to my ears right now with this tuning. Now let's go one step further. Let's also remove or move the pillow inside the kick drum so it's no longer muffling the resonant head. Let's start with full muffling again. And let's go here. And now we get a longer sounding, a longer ringing kick drum tone, like bo bo, like that. Compared to. And again, even more low end. So I hope you enjoyed the video. You can check out the Rotten Pool sessions, which include the whole pool documentary, a course about creating IRs, which is rather useful, a course about recording metal drums, the kick samples as mix-ready TCI files and raw wave files, and the Aurora DSP Rotten Pool Reverb plugin, all for 49 little dollars. The link is down below. You can also sign up for the Cola Audio Cult and get all of this stuff and tons more courses included in the price. So you can do that as well. Either way, come and check out the Cola Audio Cult. It is all rather wonderful. So thanks everybody for watching. So long, farewell, Alvida's day, and au revoir. Adios. Goodbye.